waiting on me, you done backed out the door. All right. He said, I've been waiting on you all. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He said, I'm a God that changed not. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for that. Amen. I tell you what, I'm so thankful that God is always the same. What was sin a hundred years ago, guess what? It's still sin. But you know what? He still loved mankind a hundred years ago in their sins. And he still loves us now. Amen. Somebody put on Facebook and almost chimed in on them. But I said, no, I ain't going to play the devil's game. They put on there saying, you know, if you don't like me, my friends, you know God loves everybody. I got homosexual friends. I got drunks. I got, but God loves them all. I wasn't going to say, yeah, but he don't love their sin. But I said, I ain't going to play this game. Because I ain't going to play this game. You see, if you're not careful, the devil will snooker you to play them kind of games. Come on. You think, well, I'm standing up for God. No, the devil said, I'm going to get you right in the middle of confusion and people are going to begin to think, are you crazy? And this, and I know how that works. <laughs> Little gal got a job one time down there at Rumpies, or whatever they call it now, amen, in the pastor of church and all. You don't need to be working down there in that beer joint. Come on. And they put it on Facebook. And they rolled that preacher over on the coals. And I said, oh, Lord, don't you get involved in that. He said, you need to pray for those folks. I got down, I began to pray. Next day, I look on Facebook, and the one started all that drunk. I said, well, I apologize. He is a man of God. I thought, all right, devil. All right, devil. Nobody else is going to chime in on it, though. Hey, come on. You know, you, 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 you got to understand what you're supposed to be doing down here. Come on. I hear some good preachers. But when you see them outside of the church, they ain't very good preachers. I said, I'd rather use all my country slang and walk out that door being who I am now, I'll be out the, outside the door in a little bit, I'm going to be the same person. You see, I done found out it's not what you say, it's how you live it. Come on now, when you live uh, what you say you believe in, uh, you're preaching louder than any message anybody can holler. Amen. When you walk the walk, uh, amen, you don't have to talk the talk uh, because they already know uh, that you done heard from heaven uh, and you're walking like God. Uh, come on now, somebody give me an amen on that. You see what I found out, a lot of folks don't know what they're supposed to be walking in. People get saved as well. I'm saved now. What did I do? Nobody won't tell them. Most people come to altars on Sunday mornings. They don't show up on Sunday nights. <laughs> that's my biggest test. I tell everybody that. That's my biggest test. I don't care what you do on Sunday morning. If you don't show up Sunday night, I'll say zero all that. I know you don't supposed to zero, but I said they, 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 they ain't got what they wanted. Because they got what they wanted, they'd be back. Anybody in here satisfied? Nope. I'm not where I was 40 years ago, but I said, Lord, I ain't near where I'm supposed to be. Come on now. I said, Lord, I want more of you. We sing that little chorus, more and more of him. I, I tell you, I want more of him, amen. I, I, I want to get so close to God, amen, that, that I can hear his heartbeat beat. I don't think he got a heartbeat because he's a spirit, but I want to hear him, amen. I, I just want to feel him breathe on me. Come on now. You got your Bibles tonight? Uh, you know, I was picking with a... Andy back there, he said he was going to have an election after church because uh, he said, I believe I can carry the congregation and win this church over now after this morning. <laughs> that's a story now. That's not a lie. That's a story. <laughs> look how red he is. Everybody look at the preacher back there. <laughs> Andy, I'm back. <laughs> I do thank God for that young man. Yes. You know, when I was battling that cancer, I said, Lord, we ain't got nobody to step up. 
the old brother Kim showed up and stepped up for me, and I appreciate that. But I said, Lord, we need somebody inside the church to step up. Four years later, look, I can leave. And I ain't worried about vision outreach. I ain't worried about nobody trying to underdog me because I said, that young man loves the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you what, I thank God. Y'all give in, you big old hand clap. Yeah. Now y'all give Liz a big old hand clap. Put up with them. <laughs> it takes a lot in the ministry. And the preacher's wife get more of the floggings than anybody. They're the most underappreciated and under thoughtful about person there is just about. Except for vision outreach. I tell everybody, vision outreach is a unique church. We are special. They say, well, we know if you're the pastor, they got to be special. <laughs> I'm back. Why well, you do that? Because what I got to say, I want you laughing now. And when you get in, I hope you're still laughing. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you why. It ain't but one verse. And don't get excited. It's one verse can end up being our sermon. But I want to talk about what we need to be walking in. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse one. Are you there? I hear about pages thumping. Some said no. Say amen when you get there. Ephesians 4, verse 1. Boy, I'm hearing a lot of amen, but I still see some thumpings. That's in the that's in the New Testament. Don't go to the front of the Bible. Go to the back of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Go by Daniel. <laughs> I will confuse some people now. <laughs> it is after the book of Daniel. <laughs> Many books. Oh, that's Ephesians 4th chapter. Renee done looked at me. I felt them that look. You ever got the look before? All right. Everybody's there. Boy, things getting quiet. I don't hear pages. Are you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Are you there? You got the King James Version on that phone? All right. What's the first word? It. I. 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 I like this. This is Paul talking. Paul said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. What did he say he was? Prisoner of the Lord. Anybody put? No, I ain't going to ask that question. I get in trouble. <laughs> I, I was in the prison ministry for years. And I noticed up there in Newton County in the prison ministry, amen, they could not do what they wanted to do without somebody giving them the okay, you can do it. We'd be having church, uh, and, and I see I see them doing this. I'm thinking, well, praise the Lord. They're, they're out there praising God. But then I see the guard come up, and they say, boss, can I go to the bathroom? And then they go to the bathroom. And, you know, God carried them out, and then he leaves me with all these prisoners. And, and I, I ain't scared. I ain't worried about it because I said, God's got this house. Amen. Amen. And then he gets back in. I see another one. Praise the Lord. I'm thinking, no, boss, can I go to the bathroom? So I've learned, amen, they couldn't do nothing on their own. Once they was assigned a seat in that chapel, they could not move without the boss saying you can do it. So this is what Paul said. He's I'm a prisoner. He's not like Jesus was. He said, I can only do what I hear my father tells me to do. Amen. And Paul said, I can only do those things uh, that God allows me to do. Uh, come on now. How many of you know you didn't get saved because you got up one day and said, well, I'm going to go get saved today. No, the last thing that was on Paul's mind uh, on that road of Damascus uh, was I'm going to get saved today. Uh, no, the word of God said he had a handful of papers uh, and he was going to kill a bunch of them crazy Christians, uh, but something happened. Uh, God showed up that day uh, and he became uh, no longer the servant of man, uh, but he became uh, the servant of God. Uh, he became uh, a man, uh, a bond slave, uh, if you let me put it that way. Uh, he said, I'm in this battle and I'm going to die on this battlefield because I'm a prisoner of God Almighty. See what's wrong a lot of folks is we don't die our self-will. We're still living by the desires of the flesh. We're still walking with the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We're still going that way if you're not careful. Well who cares if I fall off the wagon today? Nobody won't see me. I'm in my closed doors. 
Y'all, back when I was a boy, old Kenny Rogers, I think it was, came out with a song, and when we get behind closed doors. Yeah. <laughs> and what's wrong a lot of church folk is they think of behind closed doors. Yeah. The preacher won't know about it. My neighbors won't know about it. But let me tell you what, God Almighty is going to know about it. And God knows what's in your heart. And God knows what you're doing. Amen. Paul said, I'm a prisoner. I don't have the right. I dare you do this. In the morning, get up and say, Lord, do you need me to fast today? Hey, Lord, you want me to leave that coffee alone today? Most people don't even start talking to God until after they had a pot of coffee. <laughs> Come on now. We don't even acknowledge God. But we all get up first thing and say, Lord, will you allow me to have a cup of coffee today? Come on now, church. On. People say, you getting crazy. No, when you're a prisoner, I done seen it. Hey, man, you got to say, boss. Yeah. Hey, boss, man. And that's what we need to do. Hey, Savior. I'm a father. Come on, he might say, I'd rather you not eat today. I, I, I need you to get your flesh under subjection uh, because there's something around the corner. You don't know about it. You're not ready for it. But I'm trying to prepare you for it. And when we become the prisoners of God, uh, God will not let nothing blindside you. But God will give you revelations that you need uh, to start getting ready. Amen. Come on now. I ain't that on my main text yet. But we need to sell out to ourselves. We say, Lord, let me be able to do what Paul said in Galatians, I think, 2 and 20. It's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth within me. I think he put it this way, the life I now live. Most people come to church, but they still live the life they want to live. Oh, this is good preaching. I, I've seen it too many times. I've been in this church, this church, 26 years. 26 years I've been right here. I'm so shut now. But I see the same old. I see people come in broken. Life's all messed up. Don't have a pot to pee in. They come down here and they say, well, I'm going to give it up and give it to God. They start serving God. God start opening doors. Start blessing them. And then before you know it, they start missing before you know it, they start making excuses. Before you know it, you can't even find them close to the church. Then they want to talk about how bad the church was to them. Come on, I can preach this. I've seen it for 26 years right here. Not saying you've done it, but people came through here. And then they get broken and, and they back down on the same road because of what they didn't understand was uh, it was God uh, that gave the blessings to them. Uh, it was God uh, that was giving their life back to them. Uh, and then they thought, well, I got money. I got this. I can. I don't need God no more. And then they find themselves right back out uh, in the same condition uh, that they was in uh, because they didn't understand. Uh, I don't belong to myself no more, but I belong to God. Uh, he redeemed me. He with the price. I tell people September the 25th 2015 I count them last four years soon to be I said God thank you for them when that cancer hit me I didn't really know but by faith I knew but I said, after that day, I said, God, I give you honor for every day I had since I got out of that hospital. Amen. Because I understand what could have happened. Amen. But God said, it's not going to happen. Amen. You see, there's something I learned when you stay faithful to God. Tell your neighbor, this is why you need to stay faithful. Amen. Now, I'm going to hit something. You're going to get mad at me, but you're going to love me when you get through. That's why I had you laughing before. I paid my 10% to the Lord. For I was sick, I paid my 10% to the Lord. Oh, everybody, oh, Lord, I all know money was coming. You don't hear a pastor talk much on money. But I understood if I paid my 10%, it's not me to reap 30, 60, or 100. No, the tithes is to keep the devourer 
away from me. And when the devourer came, I said, Lord, I, I done what you told me to do. And your word said you keep the devourer from devouring me. And guess what? It worked. And that's why I didn't worry about it. Because I know I wasn't doing my thing. But I lined up to the word of God. And then it belongs to God. I'm in trouble. I ain't got no envelope. I don't want $1,000 from you. But I am telling you, when you pay your tithes, they will keep the devourer from devouring you. But a lot of people say, oh, oh, no, I can't do that to God. Well, let me tell you what, you're going to be like the rest of them knotheads. You're going to find out, hey, why, why am I losing more ground than I'm gaining? Because you're not walking in obedience. You are not the prisoner of the Lord. Oh, Lord. Say, I love Brother Danny. I, love you. I need to hear that. Because, whoo, Lord, I knew that was going to come. Move on. Uh, yeah, Brother Renee. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. I begin to study that word vocation because, you know, I always told that's the ministry God called you into. So I began to look in the Greek and all that, and I found out that's not, it said the calling. In other words, you can read it this way, walk worthy in the calling that you was called. I got my notes right here, so just hang with me. First thing you was called into was L-O-V-E. Word of God said God is love. So you need to walk in love. Me and this beautiful, gorgeous woman right here, we celebrated two years, and I make a choice every day I get up, I'm going to love her. She ain't gave me no reason not to. But I make a choice. She makes a choice. Let me turn around this way, Donnie. She makes a choice. I love that knothead in spite of him. <laughs> but that's a choice. You see, to walk in love, that is a choice. I had many opportunities not walk in love when people talk about me. Oh, I, that don't really bother me. You talk about my wife, you talk about my kids, but when you touch my grandchildren, I really have got an opportunity not to walk in love. But I had to make a choice. I got to walk in what God called me into. James said, where's that found, brother? Then go first, John 4, 7. I'm going to take my time tonight. I still got 20 minutes. Little John, 4th chapter, verse 7. Beloved, let us, tell your neighbor, that's us, love one another. You got to love me. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is what? Love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son unto the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love. Not that we love, not that we love God, but He loved us and sent His Son to be a. All right, thank you for our sins, beloved. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. What did that just tell me? God called us to walk in love. Some people are harder to love on. You know, there's some people harder to look on. Now, I'm glad you wasn't with me in my family union, but we we bringing up some old stories back in the day. And we began to talk about these two old gals. They thought they could sing. I said, you know, it's bad enough when somebody's hard to look on, you just close your eyes and things look better. But I said, but you close your eyes. Oh, James doesn't know who we're talking about now. He doesn't point that face. But when you close the eyes and you can't stop your ears up, you say, my God, it don't help. 
But they think, it, oh, I'm doing such a good job for God. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, give me mercy. And we all started laughing about that. You know, 40 years ago, not that long. It's been a while back. And we're laughing about that. You know, sometimes it's going to take great effort to walk in love to them mean people. But what you got to understand is while we was yet sinners, when we was unlovable, when we was rebellious, when we was walking in sin, when we was hurt and didn't know how to act. We, you know, when you're hurt and you don't know how to act. And boy, like I told you, I get sleepy, I get hungry, don't fool the preacher. I'll bite your head off. Praise the Lord. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, I'm going to bite it off in love. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's why I try not to get around people when I'm sleepy or hungry. They get me away from everybody. I will hurt somebody's feelings off in here if I don't. And Renee said, have you ate before church? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, good. <laughs> you got to walk in love. God called you by love. He called you out of a hateful world into a living kingdom, a loving kingdom. And so God's telling us in this hour that you must walk in love. Is it easy? Why well, no. Do you think it was easy for Jesus to walk up that Calvary's hill? Do you think it was easy for him to, to have all them stripes on his back? Do you think it was easy on him hanging between heaven and earth buck naked? Come on now. Your flesh couldn't even recognize him. You think that was easy for God? He could have called 10,000 angels, but he loved us so much that he said, I'm going to pay the price. So don't tell me. You can't do it. You can do it. But you got to choose. You got to make a choice. I'm going to love them. I had some bad neighbors one time. I didn't know how to pray. I said, Lord, move them out. He moved them out. He said, that wasn't right prayer, son, but I answered your prayer. He said, y'all say, let the love of God be said abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost taught me that lesson, I don't pray people out. I said, Lord, send your love and put it in their heart. Try and help somebody tonight. Quit praying your neighbor. Quit praying God kill them or whatever. You just begin to say, God, let the love of God start coming in to them. And the only way they're going to really recognize the love of God is by you living it. Not talking it, but living it. Showing it by your everyday action. I better get back where I'm supposed to be. Second thing. What did God call you out of? Darkness. So that means I need to walk in the light. Hello? It's amazing how people holler, oh, I'm saved, and they're still stumbling in the darkness. Oh, I told you to come preach tonight. No, so we know this ain't pleasing God. We know we're walking in open sin, and we wonder, why am I stumbling? Because you ain't walking in the light. You've been called out of the darkness into the marvelous light and we need to be the light of the world but you can't be the light of the world as long as you're in darkness. Amen. 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 Go back to 1 John 5, 7. No, 1, 1, 5. 1 John 1, 5. He's not reading so much. God said you need to start reading a little bit more, son. So I'm reading a little bit more. I'm slow down some, but I'm giving you more of the scriptures. First John 1, 5 through 7. This then is the what? This is the message which we have heard of him. Declare unto you that God is what? And in him is what? What? At what? Zilch. Zero. Goose egg. No darkness. Why do we allow darkness in us? Don't answer that question. If we say that we have fellowship with him, now this is the scripture, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, 
we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. Go with me, Romans. 13. Oh, I got to flip on around here. Where are you going to have to do it? I got my clip in the way. Romans 13, 10 through 12. Okay. Come on. No other time. Love worketh no ill. To oh, his what? Neighbor. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. You thought I was going to get off that love, didn't you? Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Come on. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of what? Law. But we ain't under law always. Go ahead. And that knowing the time. And that knowing the time. That now it is high time. When is it? Now. Right now. High time. Tell your neighbor, it's high time. High time. Wake up. You should not have been out of it, but if you ain't out of it, get out of it. Tell your neighbor, get up and get out of it. Get up and get out of it. Come on. Now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Next verse. The night is far spent. The night is where? The day is at, hand. is at hand. We need to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor, armor of life. That's not Danny Benson. That's King James. That's the Word of God. Ooh, people looking at me and say, I love Brother Danny. <laughs> you are the one they got to make the choice. I'm going to walk in the light. And when darkness try to cover the light, I'm going to find the source of it and I'm going to remove it. Hello? There's a shadow, Brother Danny. Well, what's causing that shadow? Because you don't stop whatever that object is that's starting to cause that shadow in your life. Before you know it, it's going to block all the light there is out of you. And you're going to be right back in the darkness that God delivered you out of. He said, there ain't no darkness in me. So if there's a shadow, it didn't come from God, but it must came from the world. You know if the light shining. You know if there's shadows in your life. It's not for me to judge. It's for you to understand. The Word of God told me to walk in the calling that I was called in. And I was called out of darkness. And I was called into the marvelous light. Oh boy, ain't you glad? Come on, I only got four points. Point number two. I mean number three. Patience. God called you into patience. Oh, no, brother. That's why you ain't got nothing. You can't wait. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get brother Danny or brother. Let me put this. I'm going to get brother Andy to pray for me. Because, boy, Lord, use him. That old preacher ain't no good no more. I want to I pick on Andy some more. Word of God said, anoint them with oil. And they shall want? Shall recover. When? Now. Now. When do you recover? Now. Question. You got up there and said, Lord, God save me. When did God save you? Yeah. Well, he saved me years ago. Yeah, but, he but when he came up, when he came up and asked yeah. for it, you received salvation then, right? Are y'all with me now? Cause I'm trying. I got to break this down. Lord told me, "Woo!" So we come up here in the Word of God, same word said, "With His stripes, go." Don't do it now, but but the, Isaiah 15, 5, same same scriptures talking about salvation. It's talking about healing. But we we get up, and say, oh, I'm healed. I, I'm I'm saved because I came down and I asked God. I confess. I believed in my heart. I confess with my mouth, so therefore I know I'm saved. Amen. We all agree on that. Yes. Well, didn't the Word of God say, if they lay their hands on me, I shall recover? Shall recover. Yes. But I don't feel no difference. Don't it don't matter. No. Hello? 
We won't say we healed until we see the full manifestation of come, come on now. Somebody walk with. But sometimes God said, you got to wait on some of the things. Come on. He said, in, 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 oh Lord Jesus, help me Lord. In Ephesians, he said, after you've done all, what did he tell you to do? He said, stand. And in one place he said, stand still and see the salvation of God. What is he saying? There comes a time in your life that you got to have patience to wait for God to open the next door. Most of the time we get so impatient we are beating down doors that should never have been open. This is good preaching. I know you are. Thank you, Jesus. Go, you know God go James first chapter. People don't like it, but we going with it, Lord. I got it. I didn't have it. Mark, thank you, dear. James chapter one, are you there? Right past Hebrews. James 1 and 3. Knowing this. You got to know this. Because if you don't know this, you think God will for, have forsaken you. Come on, when trials and tribulation comes and you don't get a, This is why he said knowing this. Because if you don't know it, you're going to thank God done left you out there Amen. high and dry. But I got good news for you. God don't leave you. He said, I'll be with you when you can't even see me, when you can't feel me, when you're running from me. He said, I'm right there with you. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that want, that you might be perfect and entire want. In other words, i got to have patience to receive the things that God said I can have. Yes. Some of you got to grow into it. I know it's more teaching than it is anything, but somebody needs to hear this tonight. I never in my life lived in an hour that I'm living in right now where people does not desire to be baptized with the Holy Ghost as I do the day and hour where I'm living in right now. Most people say, I just want to say that's good, that's all I need. No, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost by speaking in the heavenly language that God gives you to speak. That's fact, bottom fact. I go to my grave preaching this, and people tell me, you dogmatic about that. Are you doggone right? I'm dogmatic about the Holy Ghost. What's going to build you up on the most holy faith? He said in June 20, he said, build yourself up uh, in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and boy, I ain't going to split hairs with you. When it says Holy Ghost, that means you got to speak in your heavenly language. Uh, I, that's all I'm going to tell you about it. Hey, come on now. But you see why people don't want the Holy Ghost is uh, because it start causing, it start burning in you. And it burns that sin out. Uh, it burns. Man, with the fire, there's no darkness in the fire. It's pure light. Glory to God. If there's anything in you that don't supposed to be there, it will burn it out of you and it will purify you. My God, we need the Holy Ghost because if you can't do it, either He can do it for you. Amen. Ooh, I got a sign on that. I like preaching on the Holy Ghost. I ain't through yet. Where are I supposed to be? Oh, we're the entire wanting. When you get the dose of the ghost, you satisfied. Woo! I don't need a million dollars. You can't buy it. I said, you can't buy it. God said, you can have it. I don't want, give me Jesus. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take my house, you can take my car, you can take my job. But you know what? God said, just come, give it up and walk with me. And I walk with him. He said, here's a better. Here's better. Here's better. Here's better. Amen. If that young rich ruler only knew if he would let go of what he had, God had something a hundred times better than what he thought he had. And I'm telling you, there ain't nothing in this world that I won't let go of to get more of God. Because I understand that it's better than anything. If God said I got to have it back, he'd give me a hundred times better than what I had the first time around. Hey, you got to have patience. Some of you looked at me. Go home, read about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Study it. 
You don't say, you tie my tie, I tie your tie, we ride a Honda either. There ain't no talking in tongues. That's just somebody. And don't go around saying the blood, the blood, the blood. There ain't nothing either. I'm going to get on it. Don't say the glory, glory, glory. Oh, I got to know you ain't. You just ain't glory. <laughs> Study it. Don't sit there, oh, praise the Lord. No. Don't talk in your language. You open your mouth and now, Lord, you give me the syllable that I need to speak. And by faith, you begin to speak it. Oh, that sounds like gibberish. Well, when I came out feet first in 1960, June the 4th, I, I didn't come out talking. I came out, <laughs> I'm hungry. When I was seven years old, they still couldn't understand me. Don't believe me? Let me get some of my grandchildren up here, especially the boys. He said, what's that boy say? What's the... I can't understand. That's the way I was. Then one day I woke up. Woo! It all came together. And some of you act like you don't understand me, but you just don't want to understand me. <laughs> I still get tongue-tied. My point is I didn't come out talking. And when I did try to talk American, people didn't understand me. I'm sorry they didn't. But I, I didn't, that didn't call me to shut up, become a mute. I ain't saying nothing. I talked slower. I talked faster. I, I tried to, I went to speech up to the eighth grade and I said, Lady, you ain't going to help me. Now. Just, just leave me alone. Hey, I, I'm telling the truth. That's the way it is speaking in tongues. Some people just get it more. They can, Whoa, the, oh, praise the Lord, but it didn't happen to me. My talking in, 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 in heavenly language just like it was in my English language. I had to build it. But I was willing to speak that one syllable. And then God gave me another one. And then another one. You know, goo goo dad dad. My, 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 my great aunt had, had, had a stroke. She couldn't talk. But he said, Aunt Rosie, you want some coffee? She goes, Eat it, it. She couldn't talk till she got mad, and then she could talk that French. I'm talking about, oh, you sorry, I'm going to whip you. Oh, but, 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 but. That's French. <laughs> she could talk when she got mad. That's a, that's a put on. See, most of you looking at me crazy again. I'm telling you, you go in there, read that Bible, study about receiving the Holy Ghost. You cannot talk in your own language. You've got to begin to say, God, I'm going to submit my tongue. Took patience for me to receive the Holy Ghost. Hello. Took patience for me to receive knowledge. Hello. Let me move on to my last point. Sister T looked at me and said, I gotta go work in the morning, preacher. The last thing I'm gonna deal with, there's a lot more I could help with, I'm gonna stop on four. You gotta walk in faith. He said, without faith. Is what? Impossible. You know that? Yes. And I didn't even tell you turn to it nothing. Anybody, everybody else knew that? Impossible. Anybody in here didn't know that? You couldn't please God without faith. Anybody in here didn't know that? Well, I didn't tell you nothing new then, did I? Then why do we walk in doubt, unbelief, in fear? Because we know when we walk on these things, we are not going to be God pleasers. All right. Come on. JJ got quiet on me, didn't he? Because it's a choice. It's a choice you got to make. I choose to walk in faith. That's a choice. And I understand if I'm going to walk by faith, and sometimes I'm going to have to wait. I could go to the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the great, but it said they didn't even achieve it. But they stood in faith, waiting to believe. So I want you to understand that you've got to have faith. Well, what did Mark say? Jesus said it in red. I'm closing my Bible because I don't, I need to, I got to shut up. He said, have faith. <coughs> In God. So, back to my text, he said, 
walk worthy in your vocation or your calling. As you was called, he said, you walk in faith. Well, brother, ain't got no faith. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Romans 12, 3 said, God dealt every man. Amen. The, T-H-E, not A, but the. Amen. Or as my first grade teacher say, the. And when we sing, we always say the. We don't say the. I don't know why I said but that's off the course. But he said, I dealt you the measure of faith. You can walk in it. Now I could run you down there. Oh, if I had time, I would over there, Peter. He said, add to your faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And some there, somewhere in there, they got brotherly kindness and brotherly love and temperance. And, and boy, it, it throws all that out there at you. And say, oh, Lord. You got to walk in every bit of it. But Romans, the fourth chapter, this is what I'm going to close with, I promise. We need Abraham's. Word of God says he staggered not at the promises of God, but he was fully persuaded that he is well able to perform that which he has promised. That's faith, people. And God's telling us tonight we need to walk in the places that's your calling. That's what he called. He called you out of doubt and unbelief and fear unto faith. Come on now. He said, I want you walking. You cannot please me without walking in faith. In other words, he said, when you don't walk in faith, you saying, I don't believe what you told me. I don't believe you can deliver me. Oh, come on. We're going to get down there nitty pity now. But what is he saying? you got to trust you got to believe in me. Your confidence must be in God. What's wrong? we got our confidence in man, and man will fail you every time. But God won't. Stand with me tonight. i got to shut up. Don't want to, but I need to.